throughout this interview, we, we've talked about all the work that you've done. And you were getting paid, but you weren't getting these massive paychecks. No, you I weren't getting the got, multi million. I made a million dollars third Friday. Okay. But you know the IRS, IRS going to take all that money. Yeah. They're waiting for you to come off stage. <laughs> Where this one? Come here. How do you feel about the whole Monique, you know, thing with all, you know, the Netflix five hundred thousand thing? Well, I don't think she's no David Chappelle. Right. That's what she want to be, David Chappelle, because she got a Academy Award. That Academy Award ain't nothing but that thing sitting in the corner somewhere. Well, it wasn't for comedy; it was for a no. It's role. for movies. Yeah. So you, if you get a Academy Award, don't make don't make you go twenty million dollar person. No, oh, no, no, no. They know when they when they when they put up money for you. They know what you're going to draw. Putting asses in the seats. That's what the business is. They don't give a damn about your Academy Award. Can you put asses in the seat? Will people turn on Netflix to see your ass? Now, that's what you got to realize. I would never be complaining about this and that because people, they don't give a damn about me. And I, I do a very decent living doing stand-up. But I don't have that fame that Chris Tucker have. I mean, uh, and, and uh, Chappelle. And Chappelle and who else is it? I mean, uh, Chris Rock just Chris had Rock, one. Yeah, they they are comedians. They may not be funny actors. Chris Rock cannot compare with other actors, but he can put asses in the seat in the theater. Oh yeah, no, Chris Rock stand up I think was the best stand up of the last couple of years. Yeah, it was, it was that good. I liked it better than Chappelle's stand up. Well, you know, they got ten writers writing for him. Most of you got get writers. You got to get writers. You want to be funny? Pay for them damn writers sitting in the audience and, 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 uh, and working, doing their job. Their job is to write for you. Right, because um, Richard Pryor had a bunch of writers. He had Mooney. Yep. And they would tell him, and they would do this thing, do, do Mudbone. I remember Mooney used to tell Richard, do Mudbone. He didn't want to do it. Richard, do Mudbone. Richard, do Mudbone. Um, but... Um, yeah, all of them had right. I ain't got, I can't afford no writer, so I just do my little thing. I make my little million dollars now and just walk, go home. Let the government take what they want. I do like this all right now. I do and count my little money, go home. Mm -mm. Uh, hold on, let me get the, the right. No, thing. they all got writers, and uh, and it's now you you can't curse everybody out in Hollywood to think they're gonna treat you good. Monique cursed Oprah. <laughs> Who else she cursed she out? Cursed everybody. Tyler Perry. Uh, Will Will Packer. Who? That's well, a director, wasn't it? Yeah. Producer. What did he direct? Oh, he did. I mean, he did the NWA movie. He does all Kevin Hart yeah, stuff. Yeah, he does. Yeah, right. right. He did Roots. He yeah, did, right. Well, right. and they go, cur you son of a bitch, you, you motherfucker. <laughs> you can't do that. I, what do you mean? He ain't no motherfucker. He's just an actor you, that you don't like, uh, or a director you don't like. Well, I interviewed uh, Lavelle Crawford a while uh -huh. back, and, and he kind of pointed out that in Hollywood, they only give one black comedian a chance at a time. Look at like the comics that make it one at a time. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart, they think he's the only comedian in the world right now, for real. Because, I mean, he's not. Even if he helps out, they, oh, Kevin Hart, oh, he's the greatest. No, he's not. He's good. I love Kev, you know, but he know it. He's riding that vehicle, Cat William before him, and then he went He went loco, you know, a little bit. I don't know what happened, God bless him. He's my friend, I love him to death. But Cat William, one comedian, and it be just, it just like steps, you know? But you had, but like when Def Jam was out, remember, Def Jam was out, you had a few. Eddie Griffith, Chris Tucker, Bill Bellamy, all these guys blew up. At one time, and you, we at least we knew who they were. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like you know dictating. It's not like dictating one comic going going bring all the comedy to the masses. And that's that's how a black comedian, in especially I'm just really meaning mainstream. Are you a Kevin Hart type? Are you yeah, fuck no? I'm too tall to be a Kevin Hart type. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kevin, yeah, hell, I don't even know if I can even put my baby toe in Kevin Hart's shoe, you know. But I'm a Lavelle Crawford type, you know. But that's the thing, black comics, and I meant that, and I, and I say that they don't they don't let you have the same, I guess, platform as mainstream hmm. comics. You have to cross over, which I'm able to cross over. No, they, you don't think that's true? I don't think that's true. No, I don't think that's true. One at a time.
If yeah. You, if you get if you two or three of them, if you if you if you could put ass in the seat and got that 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 star over your forehead, that star over your head, you can get you can get in there. Right, because Kevin Hart is obviously the the guy right now. Kevin Hart got his audience. You got your damn or he got young kids. He got ten writers sitting out there writing this stuff. They go through everything. In a minute, all that's gonna be gone. You know, it's like Andrew Dice Clay. The Andrew Dice Clay used to do two shows at Madison Square Garden. Oh yeah, he was running it in the eighties. Twenty two thousand a show. He said, Spoon, I was I was working with him in in, in uh, La Jolla, I think it was in La Jolla. He said, I'm sitting there thinking, what else what else nasty I can say that's worse than what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's Hollywood, that boy. Yep, that's Hollywood. He's a funny man. Yep. Old friend. Um, but uh, I don't know about two. I don't know about I don't know about that. He if he may think that, but I don't I don't give a damn. You know, everybody ain't gonna make it. Everybody ain't gonna be uh make twenty selling out twenty two thousand seats. I mean, you've worked with almost every major comedian out there. Yeah. Um you know, including like the Robin Williams, who, who you said he used to yeah. steal, steal your jokes and everything. He didn't steal mine. He steal other people's he stole jokes. One, he stole one of my jokes. Right. But they would be, they used to hate Robin Williams. Mm. So he would be on Market Mini using everybody's lines. Yeah, you were saying. Yeah. If you look at all the comedians you've ever worked with, you know, because there's certain people, like I remember once we did an interview with Tracy Morgan, you know, when I was uh, recording at a radio station, and Tracy was always funny. He wasn't, he was never out of character. Right, he was just always well, funny. Well, that's Tracy, though. That's Tracy. It's him. Like, other, he, other comedians who I'm not going to mention, when you're just hanging out with them, they're not that funny. If you no, were, Comedy is over. Comedy yeah. is, uh, is a talent. It's, exactly. You turn it on and turn it off. If you were to say who was the funniest person you've ever worked with, off mm. camera? Eddie Murphy is Eddie Murphy's hilarious off camera. Mm. Just, you know, from his line, he don't do his line. Now he's talking about, you know, just regular stuff. He's unbelievable. Funny, funny, funny. Robin Williams never turned off. <laughs> he was always on. <laughs> always on. Always on. I, I, I knew him for years. I met him. I remember he first came from, San, I think he came from San Francisco. He turns with doctors. And, uh, but a lot of comics, you know, they're quiet when, uh, they're quiet when, it, when the lights are off. They don't want to go through all this. All this ha-ha, he-he shit is over. <laughs> yeah. Red Fox was funny. Old Fox, he'd come to the comic store, give me a double, Cavassier, and I ain't gonna pay for none of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> give me a double, Cavassier, coke back. <laughs> well, David Letterman's actually the godfather to your sons. Well, he's not my godfather. He gave my son up. You know, Dave and I are old friends. Mm -hmm. And when my son was born, he gave my son a bond that matured, and it was so, I ain't know that, I ain't never seen no bond like this. That thing matured, and and I sent my son to college with that money. Really? Unbelievable. So it turned into like a, what, a $50,000 bond or something? I don't know how much it costs, but I know one thing. I'm, I, wish I, can, I wish I can find them today, those kind of bonds. <laughs> he got a new show on Netflix. Yeah, he got a new show on Netflix, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 